Good morning. So today we will discuss chapter 6, the genetic material. Okay, so a genetic material must carry out two jobs, duplicate itself, and control the development of the rest of the cell in a specific way. So nagsabi nito ay si Francis Crick, uh, 1953. So sino nga ba si Francis Crick? So si, ah, uh, katulad na discuss natin before ng prelim, so si Francis Crick is one of the two persons who won the Nobel Prize because they found out that the DNA is, uh, is a double helix. Okay, so history of DNA. So, ang ating first scientist is the si Sir Friedrich Mischer, 1871. It has, he is a Swiss physician and a biochemist. Isolated nuclei from white blood cells in the bus and found a substance with nitrogen and phosphorus uh, in which he called as the nuclein. Later on, it was called as the nucleic acid. Next one is Archibald Garrod, 1902. Um, he is an English physician, link inheritance of inborn errors of metabolism with the lack of particular enzymes. Followed by Frederick Griffith, 1928. So he is an English microbiologist and he worked with Streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria, uh, in in which he found out that exists in two types: it, uh, the type S and the type R. So the type S is type S is smooth. And wherein it is enclosed in a polysaccharide capsule, while type R has no capsule. So, term, also term the conversion of one bacterial type into another, which is that called transformation. So, in this diagram or figure, you can see the discovery of bacterial transformation. So, there are two controls and two experiments. So, in control A, um, the bacterial colonies are type R, wherein it is inject, injected in the mouse and resulted to a healthy mouse. So in conclusion, type R bacteria does not kill mice. And control B, the bacterial colonies are capsule or capsulated, which is a, a form of type S bacteria. So in the result of the experiment, the mouse dies. And conclusion is type S bacteria kills mice. Then we have the experiment as experiment one. Bacterial colonies were heat killed type S. So the mouse is healthy. So heat killed type S bacteria no longer kill mice. And the last experiment, um, there is a combination of rough non-virulent type R and heat killed smooth virulent. Type S bacteria, uh, which results that the mouse dies, and conclusions include that live type S bacteria in blood sample um, uh, can kill. So type S bacteria transferred killing trait to type R bacteria. Then we have the physician Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod, and McLean McLeod. 1944. Uh, they are American physician. He treated nice S bacteria with protease and DNA. So only DNA is prevented transformation. Thus, DNA is the transforming principle that can convert type R bacteria into type S. And so this is the transforming principle. So when it was the when the bacterial colony is break open. Um, and there is the presence of protease, the mouse dies. And when the heat killed smooth virulent type is break open, uh, and the enzyme uh, acting upon it is the DNAs, and then the mouse leaves. Then we also have Alfred Hershey and Marta Chase, 1953. So they are both American microbiologists. So they are the one who use the blender for their experiment. So what they did is that they used E. coli bacteria infected with a virus that consisted of a protein head surrounding the DNA. So they grew a batch of virus in a medium containing 35S and 32P. So in their um, experiment, it showed that the virus transfers the DNA, not the protein, into the bacterial cell. Thus, DNA is the genetic material. So, um, the diagram you can see, 
uh, the experiment that was done by Hershey and Chase. So, where's my pointer? Okay, so in the experiment, viral protein code radioactively labeled with sulfur. So what happened? The viruses infect the bacteria and it was blended and centrifuged to separate the cells from the virus. So this is what happened. The viral protein codes or the radioactive um, is in the upper portion and the bacteria with viral DNA is in the lower portion. Uh, while when they use phosphorus, what happens is the virus infects the bacteria and it was also blended and centrifuged, but the viral protein codes are the non active or the one in the upper portion of the test tube and the bacteria with viral DNA, which is radioactive, is in the lower portion or under the test tube. Okay, next. So... <clears throat> Discovering the structure of DNA, so we have Phoebus Levin. He's a Russian-American biochemist that identified the 5-carbon sugar ribose in 1909 and the oxyribose in 1929. He revealed that the chemical he revealed the chemical distinction between RNA and DNA that RNA has ribose as a sugar and DNA has deoxyribose as its sugar. Uh, he also discovered that three parts of the nucleotide are put in equal portions, the sugar, the phosphate, and the base, and deduced that a nucleic acid are the building block that must contain one of each component. Then we also have er Erwin Chargaff in 1951. He's an Austrian-American biochemist. He analyzed base composition of DNA from various species and observed regu regular relationships. So he found out that the adenine um, is partnered with guanine and thymine is partnered with cytosine. So A is equal to T and C is equal to G. Then we also have Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins in 1952. So they are both English scientists and they use the technique X-ray diffraction in their experiment, wherein it deduced the overall structure of the molecule from the patterns in which the X-rays were deflected. So they found two forms of DNA, the A form and the B form. So the A form is dry and crystalline while B form is wet and cellular. So it 100 hours of in photo 51 of the B form of the DNA. And so discovering the structure of DNA, so uh, Franklin reasoned that the DNA is a helix with symmetrically organized subunits. So this is the um, B, this is the B form that I was talking about earlier. And ito yung photo 51. And then we have James Watson and Francis Crick. So yung kanina uh, first natin na uh, slide, uh, it was Francis Crick. So they did not perform any experiments. Rather, they used the earlier research and inferences from model building with cardboard cutouts to solve the structure of the DNA. That is why it's very controversial for some that uh, Watson and Crick uh, won the Nobel Prize. And because some of them think that the Nobel Prize must belong to um, Franklin, Rosalind Franklin, because she's the one who um, thought that the DNA is helix. But anyway, nabigay na yung, ano, nabigay naman na yung Nobel Prize kay Watson and Francis Crick. Okay, so this is just a table showing the investigators and their contribution and their the timeline wherein he conducted and found their researches. So in 2008, James Watson had his genome sequence. Okay, so what is DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid? So it is a molecule that contains the biological instructions that make each species is unique. So DNA, along with the instructions it contains, is, from, is passed from adult organisms to their offspring during reproduction. So what is a DNA structure? So DNA is a secretion of a DNA molecule. 
sequence of building blocks specifies the sequence of amino acid in a particular protein. It is also a single building block. Yeah, a single building block is a nucleotide. Um, so each nucleotide is composed of a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. So, the adenine, the guanine, are the purines, while cytosine and thymine are a form of pyrimidines. Okay. You can see the picture, the chemical composition. So, this is guanine and adenine. Then, we have the pyrimidines, the cytosine, and the thymine. And this will be the um, diagram showing how these three are interconnected. Nucleotides are joined into chains, so phosphodiester bonds form between the deoxyribose sugar and the phosphates. This creates a continuous sugar phosphate backbone. DNA consists of two chains of nucleotides in anti-parallel configuration. So the two polynucleotide chains align forming a double helix. The opposing orientation is called anti-parallelism. So if you can see in the diagram, Yan, balik taran sila. Kaya it's called anti-parallelism. And anti-parallel nature of the DNA double helix becomes apparent when the carbons in the sugar are numbered. So the, the, the carbons are numbered from 1 to 5. So this is 1 prime, 2 prime, and 3 prime, 4 prime, and 5 prime. And to the constant width of the double helix is a specific pairing of purines and pyrimidines via hydrogen, hydrogen bond. So the complementary base uh, pairs, uh, like what I've said before, is adenine and guanine and the cytosine and thymine. So the hydrogen bonds hold the base pairs together. DNA is directional. Note that one strand of the double helix runs into 5 to 3 prime direction and the other strand is 3 prime to 5 prime direction. So this one, 5, pri five prime to 3 prime and this one is 5 to 3. Okay. Next is DNA is highly condensed. So scaffold proteins from framework guide DNA strands. The DNA coils around proteins called the histones Forming a bead on a string-like structure, the bead part is called as the nucleosome. DNA wraps at several levels at it, until it is compacted into a chromatin. Chromosome substance is called chromatin. So when the chromatin is loose, it forms loops at about 10,000 places in a genome. And an anchor protein called the CTCF brings together parts of the DNA sequence within the same long DNA molecule to form the overall loop ohm structure. So there is a looping because the DNA is highly condensed and, and it, it coils around the histone. So these are the histones. Yeah, these are the histones. So they are coiled around histones. And the bit parts are the called nucleosome. So this is an example of a picture showing a non-loop domain and a loop domain. So if it's a core in CTCF, there's looping. And if it's not a core with CTCF, it's non-loop. So this one is a CTCF. So there's a looping in the DNA. Then let's talk about RNA or ribonucleic acid. So RNA is a polymer with a ribose phosphate backbone and nitrogenous base. It is consists of four different nitrogenous bases, the adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So, kung napapansin nyo, napalitan lang ng isang base. Kung nawala yung ating thymine, it is, and it was um, uh, changed into uracil. So, RNA has an extra oxygen molecule that makes RNA less stable than the DNA. So, most RNA carry out their function as a single strand. So, kung kanina ating DNA is double helix, ang ating RNA naman ay single lang. 
and they have extra oxygen molecule that makes them less stable and they are easily destroyed. So what are the three types of RNA? We have messenger RNA, the transfer RNA, and the ribosomal RNA. So the messenger RNA includes the amino acid sequence of one or more polypeptides specified by a gene or a set of genes. Then while our transfer RNA or RNA read the information encoded in the messenger RNA and transfer the appropriate amino acid to a growing polypeptide chain during protein synthesis. And our last is the ribosomal RNA. Uh, constituents of the ribosome. Uh, they are the integrated cellular machines that synthesizes the protein. So, napapansin nyo, at this is the, our messenger RNA. So, mukha siyang uh, spinal cord, so backbone. And this one, the transfer, our, transfer RNA, then our ribosomal RNA. This is a table showing uh, the types of the RNA, their sizes, and what are their functions. So messenger, R messenger RNA composed of 500 to 4,500 nucleotides, and they are the one that encodes amino acid sequence. Then we have ribosomal RNA, 100 to 3,000 nucleotides, associates with protein to form ribosomes, which structurally support and catalyze protein synthesis. Then transfer RNA, 75 to 80, transport specific amino acids to the ribosome for protein synthesis. So, yeah, for extra information. So, our messenger RNA are the one that carries information that specifies a particular protein. So, there are the, uh, the three mRNA bases in a row from a codon which specifies a particular amino acid. So they com are com uh, usually 500 to 4,500 bases long. Uh, differentiated cells produce certain messenger RNA molecules called transcripts. So information in the transcript is used to manufacture the encoded protein. While our ribosomal RNA are 100 to 3,000 nucleotide long, and associate with proteins to form our ribosome. So it has two subunits, the large and the small subunit. So the large subunit is composed of 5,347 RNA bases and has 47 proteins, while our small subunit is composed of 1,816 RNA base and has 32 proteins. So the ribosomal RNA provides structural support some are catalysts and others help align the ribosome and mRNA. And we also have our transfer RNA. So it binds a messenger RNA codon and a specific amino acid. So only 75 to 80 nucleotides long. The 2D shape is a clover leaf and the 3D shape is an inverted L. It has two ends, so the anticodon is complementary to the messenger RNA codon, and the opposite end strongly bonds to a specific amino acid. So, in this photo, you can see the two forms. This is the 2D shape or the clover leaf, and this is one the inverted L or the 3D shape of our transfer RNA. And in in this uh, in this diagram, you can see the anticodon and so like I'm, uh, like I've said earlier the anticodon is complementary to the mRNA codon and the opposite end strongly bind to a specific amino acid so you, you can see and yeah, the transfer RNA uh, which is connected this one is the transfer RNA you can see it is connected with methionine this one is glycine and cysteine uh, let's talk about if the chromosome. So a chromosome consists of DNA and proteins with a small amount of RNA. It is duplicated and transmitted via mitosis and meiosis to the next cell generation. So chromosomes have long been described and distinguished by size and shape using stains and dyes to contrast dark 
heterochromatin with the lighter urochromatin. So heterochromatin consists mostly of highly repetitive DNA sequence, while our urochromatin has more protein encoding sequences. So what are the parts of chromosome? So the first one is the telomere or also known as the chromosome tips. So each telomere repeats the sequence TTA and triple G. In most cells, Types, telomere shorten within each mitotic cell division. <laughs> then we also have the centromere or the center of our chromosome. It is the largest constriction of a chromosome. So it consists mostly of DNA and protein and it is where the spindle fibers attach when the cell divides. So a chromosome without a centromere is no longer a chromosome. It vanishes from the cell as soon as division begins because there is no way to attach to the spindle. Then we also have the subtelomere. So chromosome parts that lie between protein-rich areas and the telomeres. Areas extend from 8,000 to 300,000 bases inward toward the centromere from the telomeres. And areas of 50 to 250 bases right next to the telomeres consist of six base repeats. Many of them are very similar to the sequence uh, TA, triple G of the telomeres. Then moving inward from six base so it are many shorter repeats. So this is, this is a portrait of our chromosome. So the anterior portion is called as the PR, P arm, and the lower portion is Q arm. So the, the, much, the more darker color is heterochromatin, and the lighter one is called as the euchromatin. So this is the centromere, this the center and the tip is called as the telomeres. Then this is the subtelomere. So what are the functions of chromosomes? So they are the most important function of chromosomes is to carry the basic genetic material, which is our DNA. So the DNA provides genetic information for various cellular functions. And these functions are essential for growth, survival, and reproduction of the organism. Histones and other proteins cover the chromosome. These proteins protect it from chemical and physical forces. Thus, chromosomes also perform the function of protecting the genetic material from damage during the process of cell division. And during cell division, the spindle fibers attached to the centromeres contract and perform an important function. So the contraction of centromeres of chromosomes ensures precise distribution of the DNA to the doctor to the daughter nuclei. And the chromosomes contain histone and non-histone proteins. Uh, these proteins regulate gene action, where, wherein the cellular molecules that regulate genes work by activating or deactivating these proteins. So what are the types of chromosomes? So we have four types of chromosomes. The first one is the metacentric chromosome. Uh, they have the, the centromere present exactly in the center. So both sections are metacentric chromosomes are therefore in equal line. So examples are the human chromosome 1 and 3. Then we also have the sub-metacentric chromosomes. The centromere is not present exactly at the center. So the centromere is slightly offset from the center and both the sections are therefore not equal in length or asymmetrical. So they are examples are chromosomes 4 to 12. And we also have acrocentric chromosomes. So acrocentric chromosomes have a very uh, or very highly offset chromosome center. So therefore, one of the strands is very long and one is very short. So examples are human chromosomes 13, 15, 21, and 22. Then we have the telocentric. <clears throat> In telocentric chromosomes, the centromere is present at the very end of the center of the chromosome. 
and they are present in species such as mice and the human does not possess this kind of chromosome. So this is the diagram showing uh, what the types of chromosomes. So the telocentric, which are not found in the humans. Then this is the acrocentric, so very little that are found in our P-arm. Very short na ating P-arm. And, and long Q-arm. Then we have the submetacentric, so slightly off yung length niya ng P-arm. But the Q arm is long. Then we also have our metacentric. So the, this is the P arm and the Q arm, they are equally proportioned. <clears throat> so, what are the chromosome abnormalities? So, there are different uh, types of abnormality. We have the polyploidy, which means extra chromosome sets, then the aneuploidy, an extra or missing chromosome. So, there are two forms of aneuploidy, the monosomy and trisomy. So, when we say monosomy, one chromosome is absent, and in trisomy, one chromosome is extra. Then, we also have deletion, or part of the chromosome is missing. Duplication, part of the chromosome present is twice. There also is translocation, wherein two chromosomes join long arms or exchange parts. Then, inversion, segment of chromosome reverse. Then, we have isochromosome, wherein a chromosome has identical arms. And ring chromosome, uh, wherein a chromosome forms a ring due to the deletions in the telomeres and, and, and adheres in each end. So, what are the causes of chromosome aberration? So, there are two forms of abnormalities, the numerical and structural. So, in numerical, we have the polyploidy and the aneuploidy. So, when we say polyploidy, there uh, has been an error in cell division and possible multiple caused by multiple fertilization. While in aneuploidy, non-disjunction leading to loss or extra chromosome. Then in structural abnormalities, we have deletions and depletions and duplication, then translocation, inversion, dicentric or anacentric, we're in a crossover between a chromosome with the paracentric inversion and its non-inverted homologue. And we also have E, green, green chromosome. So these are the diagrams showing the different kinds of chromosome abnormalities. Okay, and this is non-disjunction. So if you could see, then in the normal meiosis, so in meiosis 1, there are two daughter cells. In meiosis 2, there are four daughter cells. So they are an equal number. But if you can see in the example of normal number 1, there has been a non-disjunction in the meiosis one. So, so after their daughter offspring in meiosis two, uh, the daughter, first daughter cell loses um, his the partner chromosome. So it was passed over the next offspring. And in this one, there has been a non-disjunction in the meiosis two. Yan. So, nagkaroon din na problem in the offspring. So, napunta dito sa daughter 3 and 4. Yun dapat ay nasa 1 and 2. Yan. And this is an example of haploid, diploid, diploid, and tetraploid. Okay. Uh, this is the end of our discussion. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you learned something. Thank you so much. Yeah.